do 380 here. Um, it's a follow along lecture video uh, that we can learn from, hopefully. Um, this is a supply file. It's a step. Let's see it being uploaded uh, in my data panel here. You can see it's imported from the step. Okay, there. It's all fine. What do we have here? Well, we're going to do some work here. So, one thing I'm going to do is first have a look at what we're going to look at, what we're going to aim at. This is the sim file from the other video. Remember, recall that we probably want to aim for this situation where the, the direction of the load is below the surface of the substrate, the plate, the, the housing, and the far end uh, is protruding through. So this is what we want. What do we have? Let's have a look. So one easy way to look at this first is do an inspect section analysis. And if it's nicely aligned, I'm just clicking and holding there to get the X set. So where I want to go that way. So okay. See what we've got. Got a fairly janky file here. Okay, correct. And let's rotate it around to match our sample. So if we look at these, we want this situation. We've kind of got that here, except we've got this strange, overly tight uh, thing going on here. It seems to be yeah, right up against it. This is hard to impossible to machine. So, but it's in the right position. It's on the right, oh, correct side. Jumped around there. Uh, it's on the correct side of the of the load because this nut is going to pull this down. It's equivalent to load pressing down from the top. So, however, this play, this edge here should protrude through. That is maybe possible in the configuration that we've got right now with the components we got. But as soon as we start tightening this uh, bearing nut, essentially, it's going to compress the spring and we're going to run into anything sticking out. We need another way of going about this. Um, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, we've got this model. Let's just have a look first. That one looks well modeled. There are some small overlap problems here, but nothing serious. Uh, again, it's not something we would worry about too much. Um, keep in mind that it's a step file. We can pull all these parts around. We also have no history. So let's just get ready to do some work here. So first, let's go ahead and capture design history. Creates all the parts, lovely. And then we're gonna ground some stuff. It seems, oh, it's called ground. That makes it obvious. So let's right click on ground. Ground can no longer pull. Can pull everything else still, but it's not good. So what we're gonna do next, just to save some time, we're gonna do a rigid group. And we are just gonna simply draw. No, we're not gonna draw. We're gonna pick them one at a time. Now we can choose this any way we wish. You notice here we've missed the shaft, kind of double selected, and the ground as well. So make sure we've got them all, four selected, group child, okay. Now nothing moves. Perfect. So let's see. Let's close our data panel, which is uninteresting. And again, refresh our memory. We want this situation. Okay, so first things first. This could be, we can approach this either easily or difficultly. There's two approaches. We would like to use as much as we can things like move, press pull, delete. Let's try and delete first. I'm gonna try and pick the surface in here. That is kind of not right. Nah, nice. Just delete that. And then we're looking good for that part. That was easy. We've got this, even though we have a piece sticking up here, we've still got the right situation. That looks good. Next. 
dilemma in here. Um, there's various ways to go at this. Maybe the easiest one is a sketch. Let's have a look. If we refer to Orlov, he recommends putting a cavity in there. Easy to machine, uh, fairly straightforward. It's not possible to just move and sh shrug parts around to get that, so we're going to need a sketch. So let's go ahead here and make sure our parts are centered first. Turn on the origin. Not bad. Looks straight. Looks centered. We can go at the end and say, well, yeah, by eye it looks okay, but maybe it's not. Let's do a little check. Use the measure tool or the inspect tool. And what it usually does is it gives you a center position along, in this case, the negative x. Looks about right. Minus 20, 0, 0. It is, in fact, centered. Let's check the front as well. Restart the selection. Ah. It's not a, because of that thread, it's not centered. Let's try something we know is circular. Again, 10 out. It is a metric part and it's nicely centered. Now it looks fine. So let's go ahead and do a sketch. Now I'm going to turn my analysis off. Now you can do it either way. You can select the face first or create sketch. Hold down and turn on slice. Get the same effect, but everything is there, still there now. It's just hidden for our sketching, so any occluding material is removed from our view. I can turn the origin off if I want. I can still see the center mark. So, how do we get our sketch sorted out? Probably going to want some stuff, so I need to project P for that. Make sure projection link is toggled on. That means if this part moves or some geometry shifts, the projection will go with it. Probably project these two guys. Say, okay, if I had all the bodies, let's see what I'm left with. Another way, I'm just done doing here, another way to do this without doing the project, if I want to be more exact with the intersection, is to go for intersect same geometry. This time all it does is gives me these two points. It's a little more useful perhaps for this. Okay, now what do I want? Well, a little pocket. I'm going to get the prototype written or drawn down uh, quickly here. So snap into that. Go quite a far up, quite a far, quite far up. Uh, click once to go around the corner, click and drag to get a curve, because we're going to want a, a nice fillet in here. Go down, and we're gonna, I'm going to make a point here of uh, how to control what we're cutting in Fusion. So you see I snap to this point. It'll, it won't make a constraint, but it'll let me get a nice constraint-ready surface. So you can see these are lined up. I keep going with the line tool. Not quite sure why I did it that way. There you go. We end up with a horizontal line. Right angles. This ground is kind of getting in the way. Let's have a look. So maybe we need another. There it is. And we want to cut away the ground. Let's show that. Now my preference is to oh, yeah. My preference is to pull things into shape first. So I like things that I like. A little more chunk. Go down. Kind of get it into position by encompassing and dragging. In about the right spot there. Drag around. Now I'm going to need a center line, probably. So it's not to there. Escape out of the line tool. Uh, let's undo that. Also, another way to finish a line is to just double click it. Finishes the line, but not the line tool. You notice we're still in the line tool. Escape to get out of the line tool. I like my sketches to be fully constrained. See right now, 
still act, still got uh, editable parts, editable yeah, elements. Let's go and get rid of that. I'll line up the end of the line with some fixed geometry. I need to turn this into a center line. Nice. Now let's try dimensioning some things here. Now this is hard to measure from some point in space, so let's dimension this guy in this direction. One and a half. Number four. You might get a little zoom around as it scales the whole sketch. Looks okay. Diameter. It's not bad. It's clear it comfortably inside the washer. It's also comfortably inside the outside of this nut. Let's put some dimensions onto this guy, maybe one. That's a little big. Half. There we go. Half a millimeter. Not an unreasonable request for the tool. Now the tooling would be able to produce that half millimeter without too much effort. Everything looks constrained. Nice. Finish the sketch. Turn our analysis back on to have a look at what's going on. Sometimes it hides inside. We want to revolve. Now it's inside a material so it assumes cut. Well, keep an eye on what's going on here. There's multiple ways to go at this. We're cutting the shaft as well. We don't want that. One way is to turn off the shaft cut. Another way is actually to just hide the shaft in the browser. You notice the shaft removes itself from the objects to cut. Either way, say OK. Let's turn the shaft back on. Now, this could be a view that's a little bit short. That's OK. We're only working with what we're given. Do we have the right thing? Drink through. Now we've essentially added hide that sketch here for a second. We've essentially added an extra okay, a little strange artifact going on there. Now this is it's tempting to just ignore this, but what's going on here? Ah, partial. Make sure it's full. Things should still be working correctly. You'll notice it manages it for it. So, okay. That's better. Make sure that we've not screwed up. We can hide things. These two have placed standardized parts. We see what we expect. Now, right now, it's quite hard to see what parts what. Press Shift N to colorize our components. And all of a sudden, we can see things a lot better. Good. Let me check the analysis again. If you want, we were a little worried about that thing, so why don't we just flick to the other side? Yes, looks very good. Turn my parts back on. You can undo the change of direction. And there we go. That's how to fix up our chef taper mounted with a washer and a bearing nut. Thanks for watching and over to you.